Hi, you're watching a video from UMPCPortal.com where we're going to show you today the MTech U560 which is a new UMPC that should be available in February 2008. This sample is uh, provided in retail packaging from Mobilix, M -O -B -I -L -X dot H U in Hungary, so thanks to them for sending it over. Take a look at their website because they're going to have pricing up, uh, final pricing up in about the second week of January 2008. And from what I've heard, the pricing is going to be pretty competitive, so uh, this could be one to to keep a close eye on. So, <coughs> as I unopen the box, then I'll tell you a little bit about it. Amtec have already produced two UMPCs, the T700 and the T770, which have been branded and seen around in various uh, as various models. But this one is a slight departure, whereas the others were VIA based. This one is based on an Intel. Intel uh, Steely processor A110 at 800 megahertz and it has one gigabyte RAM and um, running Windows XP as well. This one has uh, the GMA950 chipset for graphics so that's uh, quite a good quality option on the graphics side. As I take it out the bag you'll see what it looks like. You might have seen this in, in videos before. It's basically a slider form factor device very similar to the Sony UX in style. It's actually slightly bigger than the Sony UX. Uh, it's got a slightly bigger screen but the the way the, sli the screen slides up from in between the sides of the keyboard there is, is very similar to the Sony UX. The other device you could compare it to is the OQO although the OQO is in fact about that big so this is a lot wider and it's also fairly thick as well and if you were watching CES last week um, in Las, Las Vegas you'll, you'll, you'll recognize this form factor it's very popular now with uh, some of the mobile internet devices that have been designed to be based on Intel's Menlo platform in, in 2008 so um, quickly go through the rest of the box contents here and then I'll show you around the device. The box is actually quite nice, well packaged. Got a battery here which is a 30 watt hour battery. It's slightly more, slightly bigger than I expected in terms of capacity but not bigger than I expected in terms of size. It's really quite reasonable. So it's a 30 watt hour battery and with uh, the Intel Steely platform that should return um, an average of about three hours Wi-Fi on usage and I do believe there's a double capacity battery available as well so that's the battery and then also in the in the packaging underneath there is and I'll move this out of the way a bag a quick start manual a head phones not a headset cleaning cloth and the power supply which is 19 volts uh, with 110 to 240 volt input so it's a world power supply and that's a standard 19 volt power supply but I'll give you a quick look at the case here before we look on, move on to the device the case is um, not neoprene but a, a very mm, hard foam you might be to see, I can put some indentations in it. It's a kind of a foam case, looks quite good. Grey piping should do quite well to protect the device. And it just slots in like that. So, not bad, bad in terms of size, but certainly not pocketable anyway. So, I'm going to snap the battery into the back of this and take you around the device. Let's move that out of the way and we'll zoom in, give you a good look at the device itself. That's better. So, you'll notice on the, the front of the device at the top is the 1.3 megapixel camera. And it's actually a rotating camera, it goes through 180 degrees. It doesn't feel too strong I have to admit. 
Um, on the top right of the device is a Synaptics touch pointer, a nice sensitive touch pointer with uh, touch to, uh, tap to click. Got a whole series of lights here ranging from hard drive through Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and battery. This is a speaker on the right hand side here and the same on the left hand side. The speakers, um, speakers are fairly loud but not uh, as high quality as you find on the Q1U or the Q1P. This is a uh, multi-way directional pad with an enter click button in the middle and then you've got left and right mouse buttons on the top left. If you go to the top of the device, I'll just flip that over, what you've got here is CF card slot and that could be really useful for digital photographers. Um, you could also put um, potentially an HSDPA card in there if you can find one. There are a couple available with CF form factor but quite difficult to get a hold of. 19 volt DC input then we move around again. You've got some good quality buttons here um, this is the on off and hold so push down to hold and that locks everything up and that takes it out of standby. Blue separate Bluetooth off and wireless LAN off which is quite useful and covered with a little bit of rubber here is two USB ports. On the underside of the device you'll find a docking port. There's the docking port there. And I'm not sure, I haven't tested it yet, but these could be the two array microphone inputs. It would be nice if it's uh, array mics because that would be useful for Skype. There's a fan input here as well. On the left hand side you've just got uh, the headphone output. On the back of the device there's not much to see apart from the battery release button here and a st integrated stand which is quite a useful addition but it is uh, quite a plasticky device and not as strong as some of the stands I've seen. Okay, so I flip the. Well, actually, let's switch it on while I um, flip the keyboard up. And the keyboard itself is split. is is a split keyboard with function keys uh, in the middle. Uh, I don't mean F F1 to F11. I mean feature keys like um, switching to external monitor, Windows Explorer, um, screen resize. There's um, um, email start button, SAS button, and AP button. I'm not sure what the AP button is. And the keys themselves are actually quite nice. If I can just put it like that, you'll see they're not raised a lot, but they do actually click down into the device themselves. And if I maybe hold this to my microphone, you can hear that that click. So let's just have a look, look at that keyboard again. Uh, the keys are very easy to get to and they have a nice feel to them and I'm finding myself typing fairly fast on this compared to for example the, the Y-Brain which has a split keyboard. Uh, that's this one here which has got the split keyboard. This is much easier to get used to. Uh, it's up there with the OQO in terms of uh, typing speed I would say. The only problem is a lot of the uh, keys have second and third functions so getting to punctuation marks is much slower than on the OQO. The OQO has a much better system for that. The screen is a 1024 by um, 600 very high resolution so anyone with uh, problems with their eyesight might find that a bit of a problem. It will go down to 800 by 600 interpolated mode which is quite clear. Uh, it's very bright and um, it should be okay for most, so certainly for internet browsing you can zoom with Internet Explorer X7 so, so that's going to bring the font size up uh, no problem. So keep an eye out for more uh, on this on UMPC portal. I'm going to do some performance testing on it and do some size comparisons, another video maybe after this but for the time being as we're running up against the 10 minute YouTube limit that's the Amtec U560 supplied by mobilex.hu, so thanks to them for sending it over.